Here we go, video number two, publishing today on the first impressions for the Nike Zoom Fly Flyknit. Not my full review, that'll happen after 50 miles. Today was eight miles. One of those miles, I picked up the pace, dropped the pace down to about 540 pace. I was looking at my watch just to see how the shoe was reacting at different paces. I looked at 630, uh, six flat and then about 540 530 is what I uh, bottomed out at all right and it has a 10 millimeter drop 33 millimeter stack height in the heel 23 millimeter in the forefoot so quite a bit for a stack height that 33 like you're not right on the concrete or the pavement or wherever you're running like you notice that you're kind of above the ground a little bit in this shoe and uh, okay it has the carbon fiber plate through this midsole the exact same carbon fiber plate that is in the 4% Flyknit, uh, the Vaporfly 4% Flyknit. And just so you know, this is not my comparison video to the 4%. I'm going to do my best not to talk about that shoe, even though it's very tempting to compare it right now to this guy. But I'll wait for that video for another video. Uh, okay, and the weight, 7.5 ounces, 7.5 ounces in my, in my shoe size. So 213 grams for everyone outside the United States. And it probably, I'm, I'm guessing it's about 7.8 ounces for bigger shoe sizes would be my guess. And moving on to the upper. So it's the Flyknit upper material that Nike is very well known for now. And I went true to size for this shoe. But I will say, it felt a little tight today. And I had, what socks were I wearing? That's really important to remember. If your shoe is feeling a little tight, you might be wearing a, an extra uh, thick sock. And I'm trying to, oh yeah, the stance, yeah. So those those socks are, are not thick at all. So that tells me that, who knows, you might wanna go a half size up. I like my shoes to feel snug, uh, but I will say, I could feel a little bit of uh, a little tight, especially over the top of my foot at my true to size uh, in this shoe. I have heard and read that the Zoom Fly upper over time will loosen up. So I'm hoping that maybe by mile 25 or 30 that the, that the upper begins to loosen up a little bit. And moving on to the midsole for the Zoom Fly, it's the Nike React Foam. And I'll just put it out there right now. I'm calling it, this is gonna be way more durable than the Zoom X foam, and I think that's a pretty well-known fact in the in the Nike running shoe lineup, but I can just I can just tell by holding it and feeling it that it has a lot more, um, it's, a, it's, it's more firm than the Zoom X foam. And Draymond Green of the Golden State Warriors in 2017, they were, they were working with him to develop better React foam for his basketball shoes. And then I'm not gonna remember his name, but the guy in charge of the running shoe lineup at Nike said, wait a minute, we want that React foam in some running shoes. So that that is the epic React lineup that you see uh, in, the Nike, in the Nike lineup. But what they've done now is they've taken it, put it into the Zoom Fly shoe, and then added the carbon fiber plate from the 4%. So this is kind of a hybrid shoe between the 4% and the epic React coming together for what you see here in my hands in the Zoom Fly, which is, I think it's kind of neat to see different technologies across the Nike running shoe lineup um, come together into a shoe. I've also read for the Nike React cushioning that they did 400 different uh, combinations on a, on a chemistry level with the foam, like all these different, uh, I don't even know what to say, chemicals and different products, they mix like, 400 different times they tried before they struck uh, what they consider gold. I'm not going to call it gold yet, but what they consider gold with the Nike React Foam. So they went through testing and testing and testing again to come up with this React Foam. And through the outsole, definitely a road shoe. It's got the harder rubber through the forefoot and then the exposed React Foam through the midfoot and then in the heel striking areas that get a little more wear and tear, again, that harder uh, black rubber uh, on the on the heel area where people tend to land more so. So for my first impression, firm, a little bit on the hard side. I'm gonna say that you're gonna need, now it's got the carbon fiber plate in there. So that's part of why it's feeling a little firm. I'm gonna say that it's gonna take a good 25, 30, maybe even 40 miles before I feel like this shoe will be broken in and 
you don't want to break it in too much if you're going to use this for a racing shoe, okay? Now, some people are training in this shoe. I'm just going to say right now, I don't see myself training in this shoe. It felt just a little too aggressive for training. But listen, you could definitely train in it. I prefer, here's my thesis. I think carbon fiber plates are great technology. I think they're pushing the envelope forward in the whole running shoe landscape. But imagine training in a shoe that is a little more, eh, I'll just say, um, a little more mushy, a little more, not as, uh, not as much energy return because it doesn't have a carbon fiber plate. So what if you train in a shoe that makes your workout just like 10% harder? Meaning you got to make up for that energy loss because the shoe is not as advanced on the technology side. And then, and then you put on a shoe with ZoomX foam, React foam, carbon fiber plate, uh, the Ultra Boost phone in the Audios 4, any shoe that is, is pushing the envelope on the technology side, when you get to the starting line and you get going, you're going to be like, oh, I feel amazing. So that is my thesis behind this shoe. I don't see myself, and listen, just my first impression, but I don't see myself training in carbon fiber plates too much. All right? Again, just my opinion. Okay, firm ride. Uh, it's going to take 25 miles. I'm predicting to break it in a little bit because it did feel stiff. And then, toe off. I think if you're a runner that is really concentrating on towing off, and I mean really all the way through to that to that point, right at the top of the shoe where you're towing, where the top of your toes, so you can get that full benefit of that plate and of the foam. I really almost more so, and I said I wasn't gonna talk about the 4%, but almost more so than the 4% because this is a little more firm, whereas the 4% has a little more cush because it's that ZoomX uh, foam, and this guy's more firm, so I think you're gonna get, if you can focus on that toe off, you're gonna get more benefit in that propulsion forward. That's what I was feeling in that 540 mile that I did. I was like, okay, get on the toe, get on the toe, push me forward. And it felt pretty darn good. I'm just saying it felt real good to toe off. So if you're a toe off person, watch out. It might do, it might do the trick for you. Coming out of the box, I was a little torn between 10K and half marathon. Which race would I use this shoe in? I'm gonna go with half marathon. You, yeah, of course you can use it for a marathon, of course you can use it for a 10K, but I'm thinking with the stack height being so high, I think it might be a little too much for a 10K, and then also with it being a little more firm, I think it might be a little too firm for the 26 mile distance. I'm just, I'm feeling the half marathon. Like that's again, my gut reaction after the first run today. We're reacting to the React foam and the keyword is React and the question of the day. Do you have, a 10K or a half marathon on your racing calendar in 2019? And if, if so, do you have your racing shoe picked out? If not, that's okay. If you do, what is it gonna be? And which, you know, and so let us know your distance and the shoe that you're thinking about. And who knows, maybe some of you will put this guy down. Maybe you'll go with a New Balance shoe or a Saucony shoe or a uh, or a uh, or an Adidas shoe or whatever the case may be. Um, and listen, it could be trail, but obviously, you know, this is a road shoe. So those are my first impressions of the Nike Zoom Fly. Flying it, and thank you for being here. And um, thanks for ascending with us on this 10,000 above 10,000 subscriber territory. Uh, it's just a it's a joy to strive to do my best to bring you content that I hope you're able to learn from. And um, anyway, I mentioned this in the vlog earlier this morning, but if you didn't watch that, you're just watching this one. Thank you for being here and subscribing and commenting through the question of the day and just for caring, caring about each other down in the comments and helping each other uh, answer questions about different running shoes and oh my goodness, like the questions that come in down below are unbelievable and I can't always answer all of them, but keep them coming and hopefully we can work together to answer them. <sighs> Seek beauty, work hard, and love each other. Woo! See you tomorrow. Actually, tomorrow, race day, tomorrow, race day. <laughs>